okay guys welcome back so for this video we are going to discuss belt friction pero yung formula natin dito pwede rin gamitin sa ropes hindi lang siya sa flat belt okay so ito kasi uh, flat belt lang to ito yung illustration natin okay so sa figure natin meron tayong tinatawag na coefficient of static friction yun yung mu yung angle of contact yung beta so sa application pwedeng ito ay pulley so dito sa figure na to meron din tayong tensions yun yung tight side yung mas malaki at yung slack side or yung mas maliit okay, so dito sa figure na to ang impending motion natin yung kanyang direction ay pag ganyan so nandito yung mas mataas na tension So, kung i-relate -re natin tong dalawa, ang equation natin or formula ay ito. So, T2 is equal to T1E raised to mu multiplied by beta. Or kung andon halimbawa yung mu at saka yung angle of beta, pwede nyo i-solve yung mga yon. So, gamit nitong equation na ito. So, ito na-resolve lang dito. Okay, so let us solve some problems. So, number one, from the book of Ferdinand Singer. So, a rope wrapped twice around a post. So, dalawang beses daw, nakarap yung ating rope dun sa isang post. Will support a weight of 4,000 pounds. So, ito yung weight na given when a force of 50 pounds is exerted at the other end of the rope. So, ito naman yung 50 pounds. So, determine the coefficient of friction. So, unknown yung coefficient of friction. So, given yung dalawang tension. Okay? So, since alam natin dun sa formula, yung T2 lagi yung mas malaki, so, ilagyan natin yung T2 dito, dun sa weight. So, and then, rope twice. O, oh, ibig sabihin nung dalawang ikot. So, therefore, dalawang 360. So, 2 times 360, yun na yung ating angle of contact. Okay? So, kung titignan natin sa side view ito, so, bali ito siya. Okay? So, solution. Magamit yung ating equation kanina na diniscuss. So, yung ln T2 over T1 is equal to mu multiplied by angle beta. So, isosolve natin yung mu. Pero yung beta natin dito, bago nyo yung pwedeng i-multiply dito, make sure siya ay naka-ray dyan. So, mamaya mag-convert tayo. So, solving for the coefficient of friction, mu. So, that is simply equal to yung ln T2 over T1 over yung ating angle beta so this is equal to ln yung t2 yun ay 4000 over 50 then over angle beta so 720 multiplied by so gagawin natin itong region so therefore multiply natin sya ng pi over 180 okay, so this is equal to 0.349 or simply 0.35 So, we are done with our first problem. So, let us proceed to number 2 problem. So, the belt on the portable dryer wraps around a drum D. So, ito yung drum D. Idler pulley A. So, ito yung idler pulley. And a motor pulley B. So, ito naman yung pulley B. If the motor can develop a maximum torque of 0.8 newton meter, determine the smallest spring tension required to hold the belt from sleeping so ito yung tension dito sa spring no Ayan. so ito kasi yung ating motor so ang direction nya so makikita nyo clockwise so pag ganitong clockwise to ang mas mataas na tension nya dito ay automatic yung nandito okay? sa side na to Ayan. so ilalagyan natin dito yung tension na isa so T2 then dun sa kabilang side ng belt in yung T1. Okay? So, ilagay na rin natin yung reaction dito sa B. So, ilagay na lang natin B H. Okay? So, ito yung unknown natin. Let us denote that as T. Okay? So, masusolve lang natin to pag alam natin yung tension dito. So, ito, anyway, ito yung uh, tension dito, T1. And then, nakalagay din uh, yung coefficient of friction, mu, is equal to 0.3 and then lastly yung statement dito ignore the size of the idler pulley A so ignore yung size na ito kapag ignored to ibig sabihin nun wala tayong angle of contact dito sa pulley A 
So kapag wala tayong angle of contact, automatic yung tension dito sa side na to, tsaka doon sa side na yon pareho lang. Okay, so magiging FBD natin ngayon ay eto So neglected yung size ng pulley A, tapos ito na yung tension. Pero kung hindi neglected or hindi ignored yung size na ito, isosolve nyo yung angle dito. Okay, so that is simply 90 plus yung 30. So ngayon, okay na yung FBD natin. Nakikita natin yung unknown, tapos yung given, yung moment, tsaka yung coefficient of friction. Ngayon, saan ba tayo mag-start ng solution? So kanina, sinabi ko, so kailangan natin yung tension dito. Okay, yung tension dito sa may pulley A bago natin masolve yung T. So for short, ito yung given. So kailangan natin yung T1. So dito tayo mag-start ng ating solution ito sa FBD ng motor. So, solve natin yung tension T1. So, paano ba i-solve yun? So, number one, meron tayong relation dun sa tension. So, yung relation ng dalawang to, so, from our equation, T2 equal to T1 multiplied by E raised to mu multiplied by beta. So, mu, meron na tayo, 0.3. Yung beta, since ito ay horizontal, tapos horizontal to, so, alam naman natin, ito ay vertical, at ito ay perpendicular, ito, ganun din. So, alam natin ngayon na ito ay equal to 180. Okay? So, yung beta natin dito ay equal to 180 degrees. So, this is T1 E raised to mu 0.3 multiplied by beta in region so 180 multiplied by pi over 180 so pwede na rin kayo mag convert kung gusto ninyo so ito ay magiging uh, pi na lang so equation lang yung masasolve natin so let us denote this as equation 1 okay and then next, paano ba natin isosolve yung T1 ngayon since dalawa yung ating unknown dito or variable? Okay, so ang isa pang equation na pwede natin gamitin ay yung summation of moment. Okay, so kapag summation of forces horizontal kasi, madadagdagan lang yung ating variable ng B sub H. Although hindi na kailangan to. So gagamit tayo ng summation of moment, of course, at point B. So equal to zero. So, assuming clockwise positive. So, clockwise moment, meron tayo yung 0.8 newton meter. Ayan. So, ilalagay ko yung unit kasi yung ating radius dito ay 20. So, radius to yung 20 millimeter. Then, next. So, we have clockwise moment for T1. So, T1 or plus T1 multiplied by moment arm is 20 millimeter. And so kailangan natin ito i-convert ng meter para consistent or pwede rin ito yung convert natin ng millimeter. Then last yung T2. So counterclockwise. So T2 multiplied by. So same lang dito. So ito ay 0 0.02. Okay? So yung 20 millimeter ay equal lang siya sa 0 0.02 meter. Then this is equal to 0. So pag sinimplify natin to so ito siya. Okay, so this is equation 2. Then substitute equation 1 to equation 2 to solve for T1. So pwede na natin gamitin yung calculator para solve yung T1. Then using x as our unknown or for T1, then shift solve. We can solve x or T1 equal to 25.54 Newton. So ngayon mayroon na tayong T1, pwede na tayong pumunta dun sa unknown natin which is yung T. So, dito tayo sa FBD ng member na to, yung AC. So, yung T1, alam natin, 25.54 Newton. So, ganun din to. So, again, ito, neglected yung size ng ating idler pulley A. So, wala tayong angle of contact. So, therefore, dun sa ating equation, magiging equal lang yung tension dito sa side ng pulley na to, tsaka dito sa side na to. So, ang dimension nito, bali ito ay 50 mm. So, this is also equal to 0 0.05 meter. Then, this one is also 0 0.05 meter. So, solving for T. 
So, we can simply take summation of moment at point C. Okay, so, magmo-moment na lang tayo sa point C. Equal to 0. So, assuming clockwise positive. So, ito ay tension. So, kinorek ko lang yung ating figure. So, yung moment nito clockwise. So, yun ang unahin natin. So, T multiplied by yung kanyang moment arm. So, 0.05. So, ito kasi naka 45-45 degrees lang. Although, walang given na angle of inclination to. Pero kung titignan natin mabuti, since 45 degrees to, so most probably, ito ay 90. Or simply, yung moment arm natin dyan ay 0.05 meter. The next, we have yung T1 dito sa horizontal side. So, yung moment arm nito, so ito lang siya. So, this side is simply equal to yung haba nito. Relate natin dito sa 45. So, that is simply 0 0.1. Yung 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05 multiplied by cosine of 45 degrees. Okay, so, ang moment arm nito ngayon ay ito. So, minus kasi counterclockwise. So, 25.54 multiplied by 0 0.1 cosine of 45 degrees. The next... Yung ating T1 dito, kung mapapansin ninyo, meron tayong angle na 30 degrees, tapos ito 90. So, therefore, ito ay 60. So, pwede natin isolve yung kanyang component kung ayaw natin isolve yung kanyang moment arm. Okay? So, solve natin yung kanyang component. Unahin natin yung vertical component. So, this is simply 25.54 multiplied by sine of 60 degrees. Then, yung kanyang horizontal component, so that is simply 25.54 multiplied by cosine of 60 degrees. Okay, so our next moment, pwedeng ito, or yung isang to. So, counterclockwise naman pareho. So, pwede natin ilagay. So, minus 25.54 cosine 60 okay, so yun yung first pa lang so kanyang moment arm ay ito so multiplied by 0 0.1 cosine 45 then last force ito 25.54 sine 60 so counterclockwise yung moment nya so negative 25.54 sine 60 Yung kanyang moment arm, itong side naman na ito. So, 45-45 lang naman. So, pareho lang yung side na ito. Okay? So, 0 0.1 cosine 45 din yung ating moment arm. So, this is equal to 0. So, kung isosolve natin yung T dito, yung tension sa spring. So, that is simply equal to. So, ilipat lang natin ito lahat sa right side. Tapos, divide ng 0.05. So, from here, we can solve T equal to 85.46 Newton. So, let us proceed to our third problem. So, again, from the book of Hebeler, so, a hoser is wrapped around a fixed capstan. Yung hoser, yung malaking roof, tapos yung capstan, ito. Ito yung ginagamit pantali ng mga barko. Okay, so, if the tension in the roof caused by the ship is... 1,500. So, ito yung force na yun. Determine the least number of complete turns the rope must be wrapped around the capstan in order to prevent the slipping of the rope. So, hanapin daw natin yung number of turns. So, let us denote yung number of turns na capital N na lang. Okay? So, ito yung required natin. And so, number of turns. The greatest horizontal force that a long shoreman can exert on the rope is 50 pounds. So, ito naman yung isang force dun sa kabila ng rope. And the coefficient of friction is 0.3. So, ito yung ating mu. So, ito yung mas malaking force. So, therefore, ito yung ating T2. Then, ito yung T1. Then, yung mu is 0.3. So, ngayon, paano ba hanapin yung number of turns? Dun sa ating first problem, may given na wrap twice. So, sinold natin doon yung angle of contact, yung beta. So, similar lang dito. Masusolve natin yung angle of contact and then solve natin yung number of turns. So, kapag nasolve na natin yung beta, divide lang natin siya ng 
to pi kasi yung isang ikot ay isang turn so bali kumbaga ito ay 2 pi per turn or revolution so pag sinabi number of revolution naman so same lang dito sa number of turn so pwede yung ilagay dito na 2 pi per turn or revolution okay so ito na yung ating magiging equation for n so solution Again, pag given yung T2 tsaka T1, direct substitution lang dun sa ating equation na T2 equal to T1 multiplied by E raised to mu multiplied by beta. Okay, solve natin yung beta dito. Again, pwedeng gamitin yung ln T2 over T1 equal to mu beta or yung beta that is simply equal to ln T2 over T1 over mu. So, substituting the given. So, yung masusolve nating beta dyan ay 11.34. So, ang tanong, anong unit nito? So, ang unit nito, automatic ay radian. Okay? So, pwede natin siyang i-divide ng 2 pi radian. Kung sinolve nyo dito ay nakadegrees, pwede rin. Pero, ang i-divide natin ay 360. So, pwedeng beta over 360 degrees. Ito kapag ka naka-degrees yung ating angle. Ito naman pagka naka-radian. So, therefore, we can now solve for the number of turns n equal to yung beta natin, 11.34 over 2 pi radian per revolution or per turn. So, that is equal to 1.8. So, approximately, that is equal to 2 turns. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.